Hey everybody, welcome back to our neck of the woods. So as the title of this video says, uh, we're gonna be talking about a man cave, uh, bunker room, gun room, whatever you wanna call it. So head down the basement with me and I'll show you what uh, I'm allowed to do. So, I've already given you guys kind of a tour of what the basement's going to be, but the uh, other day when the wife and I were down here, Aaron gave me the go ahead that I can have my gun room or my man cave, whatever you wanna call it. And to, uh, till then, I really had no idea where I was gonna put it or how we were gonna do it. Now, if you remember, this video is gonna be a while in the making. Um, so, I don't know what point in time I'll post it, but. Uh, from a few videos ago probably, and a few weeks or months ago, this utility room that's getting built over here is obviously gonna hold all of the house's utility stuff. And then from this corner here, we're gonna go all the way down there straight as an arrow, and this is all gonna be blocked off for a gym. We're gonna have two bedrooms over there with a Jack and Jill bathroom in between, and then this is basically all just gonna be living room. Now, the reason why Aaron gave me the go ahead on doing my little man cave is because she wanted a bar at the back of the living area. And this house is 37 feet long. So if you're over here at the bar, to me, that's just a very far way over there. Um, I mean, you'd have to have that whole wall be like a TV that if you're serving drinks or something, like you'd still want to be able to like watch a football game or something and you don't want to be squinting and like it's so far away. So I was like, it doesn't make sense to have the bar so far back here. Let's go ahead and move the bar up more forward this way. But, what do we do with all that space behind us now? So this gets you a heck of a lot closer to the wall over there because this wall is all completely flat now. That corner won't actually be there. You have no idea that there's actually something going on behind you. And because we have a bedroom going over here in this corner over here, again, this wall back here from those studs over there to where this wall over here for the bedroom will start, you won't even know that that wall is there, except for all of my viewers and watching this now. The only way that you'll actually be able to tell that something is going on is when you walk into the gym, which is right here, you technically will be able to look back there with the utility room open, and you'll be able to see that wall back there, and then if you look over here, you'll notice there's a depth difference. That's the only way that you're gonna be able to tell. But what Aaron has given me the go ahead is I'm actually am going to build a cave. I'm not gonna build some massive room or something that takes up a lot of space in the house. I wanna actually just use like a little private secret door or something that will be hidden, no one will know that it's there. And she's given me the go ahead that I can basically have this room four feet wide. So basically from this stud here to this stud here. And if you go down this way until we meet the bedroom, that gives us 18 feet, almost 19 feet long. So as you're standing here in the bedroom, this door will probably be like over here somewhere. You'll walk into the bedroom and then probably over there, I'll go ahead and put a closet. So you'll have to go over here, open up the closet door, and then if I put like a false panel or something in here, or like a fake door, that door will open up, and then you'll be in this four foot long, 19 foot long cave. And that's basically essentially what it is. I have no idea how I'm gonna finish it out, but if I had millions of dollars, you would walk into this thing, and on this wall here for the ICF, and on this wall over here, I would just line the whole thing with like guns. Like you're walking into a supermarket and they're just lined from nine feet up on the ceiling all the way down to the ground. And you're just walking down, going and picking whatever you want off the wall. Now down here at the end, because we've got four feet here, that's probably a heck of a lot of room to go ahead and bring a safe down in here. So the safe will hold, you know, our important documents, whatever, you know, typical people put in the safe in their home, uh, maybe the ammo and stuff like that. 
but that gives you four feet of door swing in here not to hit anything and then i do make my own ammo and stuff uh or I reload my own ammo. So somewhere in here, I'll probably have like a one foot deep uh, uh, depth bench. That should give me enough room in here to put a seat right here. And then, I don't know if I put a TV in here or something or sound system and whatever. I can sit here, make a bunch of ammo, and no one will even know that I'm down here, especially if I insulate this wall here. You've obviously got reinforced concrete on this side, and again, uh, just a little hidden access door inside of a closet of a spare bedroom. And again, I think in here will just be absolutely sweet. So again, this video is probably gonna be some time in the making, so I'm gonna stop it here, and then we'll pick right back up probably months later when I go ahead and purchase the lumber and we go ahead and build out this wall over here i would like to build out the bedrooms sooner than later because the sooner i can get these bedrooms knocked out in this wall uh, the sooner i can go ahead and uh, connect the electricity up uh, for this box for the stair light at the top of the stairs there and then um, that's also a good spot where this stringer and everything we can go ahead and attach it to all the uh two by fours running this way so this stringer is nice and secured to this wall and then that will just let the county be that much closer to approving us for electric because then they can see everything properly mounted and hung and then again as the prices of lumber keeps changing and hopefully dropping we can at least frame it out down here so it's really not that much i don't think it's it's not that many pieces uh it does cost a lot of money unfortunately with the, the price of lumber as it is right now which is in the middle of july uh 2021 but uh to f uh finish out uh this wall here at 37 feet to finish out that wall there at 18 or 19 feet and then to finish out the rest of this wall here which is uh whatever 37 feet is minus what I've already done there so far. I think that's uh, eight or 10 feet or over there so far. I think it's eight actually. So uh, that's not that many studs, that many pieces that I need to purchase. But uh, again, stick with us. We'll get back to this video when I start building out that wall. That way you guys have a little bit more of an idea. But at least I got the go ahead from the wife that I can literally go ahead and build this sweet little cave. And again, to me, it's gonna be kind of like a little uh, bunker slash hideaway slash uh, gun room slash man cave. So stick around and we'll be back when we get started on it. Hey everybody, welcome back for another day. So this is actually like the second time I've picked up the camera and I think a week. It will not stop freaking raining. Today was probably one of the worst that, uh, first off, it's been raining all day. It's kind of letting up now, getting late in the day, but just steady downpour. Every other day it just rains like crazy for like an hour and then kind of lets off, but enough that uh, getting in through here is almost impossible and getting out of where I am over there is pretty much impossible without me using the tractor. Although it is sitting on some two by tens, so maybe I might be able to get it out, but uh, we're gonna head to the store right now. And what I'm actually gonna finish the rest of this video on, um, if you guys are already watching this, this is the bunker video or safe room video or whatever. So we're adding this one on to trying to get the roof uh, finished with the uh, shingles on this side at least. But uh, we're gonna go purchase the lumber and probably what I'm gonna do is actually use plywood, nice sanded plywood for the walls in there. So that way if we need to hang any hooks or anything on the wall, or attachment plates and stuff. We'll have a nice bonded uh, strong surface without me trying to hit just every eight inches on center to where I may not know uh, exactly where those are um, behind drywall because I actually haven't used a stud finder yet on drywall um, through uh, the ICFs there. So anyway, we're gonna go hopefully, lumber prices are dropping. I bought some uh, two by fours the other day and they were down to like $4 and some change. And if you were to ask me at any time, Scott, what's a good price on uh, lumber? I would tell you a two by four should be around 350. And the bent down and said, 
I need about tree fitting. So the fact that two by fours are down into the fours now, uh, and then if you get bulk pricing or rebates or whatever, wherever you go to get them down closer to like four even, uh, I'd say lumber prices are actually returning to normal. Uh, in the video where I put the roof sheathing on, uh, we were down to about $34, I think, not bulk discounted. Those were down to about $30. Uh, when, and that's 5 8 inch plywood versus um, what I bought for the house, you know, months and months and months ago. I want to say it was only about $28, $27. Maybe it was discounted down to $26, but we're getting closer. So I feel that we're good to go to the store, purchase the 2x4s to basically start uh, the bulk majority of the framing in the basement. So that's going to be down where the utility room and the gym is. Uh, this little bunker room that you guys are now going to see where I'm going to put in. And then the basement uh, bedrooms that are go down the other side of the wall that's uh, going to be parallel with the uh, gym and stuff. So I'm going to head to the store right now, pick those up, and we're going to get started. And you guys are actually going to see for the first time uh, again, if you've already watching this video, you've already seen the intro. So we're going to make my cool little room down there hidden and secret and, uh, we'll get it all plumbed out and, uh, or framed out and then we'll figure out what I want actually in that room to go. So hang with us and I'll be back in a little bit. All right, everybody, we are back down into the basement and yeah, it's actually good that it's not so echoey down here now that this furniture and everything's breaking stuff up. But, uh, we got back kind of late. Um, from the lumber yard, uh, we picked up a whole bunch of stuff and we had to carry it all in. We actually, once again, wouldn't you know it, spent a thousand dollars in lumber. But since lumber prices are getting better, we actually got seven pieces of treated, so we can put that on the ground first. We got 75 two by fours, 10 foot tall. And then I did have some nice sanded plywood, uh, half inch thick, four by eight sheets. But when I got there, I was like, eh, it's just not pretty enough um, if I don't want to do any finishing work or just I don't want to just throw paint on that. So I looked down and I found this stuff. So this is four by eight sheets also, but it's actually particle board. Now, I don't trust particle board for like uh, anything that has to go horizontal, so anything that has to hold up weight, but vertical, I think it's probably no problem to just sit it up against the wall on that side of the ICF and on the inside of what, I actually don't know what I'm gonna call this yet. Should we call this a bunker? Should we call this a gun room, safe room? You know, what should we call it? What do you guys think uh, it should be? But this particle board was actually $5 cheaper per board, and it's actually 5 eighths of an inch thick. The half inch stuff was only a few cents cheaper, so why not step up to 5 eighths instead of the plywood that was only half inch? And again, with particle board, this you can't beat this stuff on like fit and finish. Um, particle board, kind of like MDF since it's engineered, manufactured, it is absolutely baby smooth. There's no knots, there's no nothing, and that other stuff, the half inch plywood, even though it was sanded, which is more expensive than unsanded, if there was a knot in the board, they filled it in with epoxy, and then you'd have to look at that epoxy or paint over that epoxy, and it just wouldn't look that pretty. So um, nothing's gonna beat this on fit and finish, but again, it's particle board. Um, it, it could break down over time. If it gets wet, it'll absolutely fall apart. And if you guys aren't familiar with particle board, basically plywood is basically just a veneer of wood where they send a big roll of a tree through basically like a razor blade. It cuts off a thickness of that tree and just turns it into one like solid sheet of paper. They then cut that paper and then they'll put a ply of the wood uh, in this direction and then this direction, then this direction, then this direction, and they just keep going back and forth until you build up your plies. Uh, if you remember like on the house or on the roof, I said I got five eighths from Home Depot and from, I think at the time I bought it from Menards. Uh, the Home Depot stuff was only like four ply while the Menards stuff was five ply. Both five eighths of an inch thick, but it's the different thickness of plies. So 
That's plywood, it's usually very strong. It's got very little glue, so it's uh, pretty lightweight, but again, really strong. Then you've got OSB, which is oriented strand boards, just strands of uh, wood that they chip and chunk off of basically leftover material and full trees. Uh, once they get their length and their thickness, they press it, glue it all together, makes for a very strong material. But uh, with the subfloor here, not the best OSB that we used. Hubert Zip and LP make a way stronger material that uh, they use a lot better glue to hold everything together. But uh, usually a little bit more weight. Back in the day, it used to be a lot cheaper because you're just using shards of material. So it's not like as expensive as plywood. That's flipped in the past couple of years. Don't exactly know why. And then of course, at the end, you've got particle board, which I believe it's actually basically just sawdust. So it's extremely heavy because it's basically nothing but glue holding sawdust together. Uh, it is not strong at all. It cannot get wet. It's not an outside exposed thing, but uh, you do make cabinets out of this stuff for internal structure. Again, I don't really like to make it for shelving or anything, but, uh, Base cabinets and stuff on the inside, if you open them up and look inside, usually you do see particle board. And uh, yeah, five eighths of an inch thick, I think that's more than strong enough for us to put nails uh, through it, hit into the ICF here, and then we should have a very strong system with whatever we're gonna do to like hang our gun racks and stuff on. Uh, and I do have one in particular in mind, I'll have to show you later. But uh, basically you won't even see this stuff. But uh, whether or not this fit and finish is 100%, this stuff was still the cheapest out of everything else. So why wouldn't I say $5 per board and go with 5 8 again instead of the half inch? So we're gonna get the laser set up so we get the first board nice and level. We'll get a little bit uh, of a gap off the bottom because again, if the basement were to ever flood, this stuff's basically just gonna be destroyed. So I wanna get it up off the ground just in case and we'll put a piece of trim down there so that you don't see it and we hide it and uh, we'll get that first board level. Then we'll trek on down here to figure out where the bedroom, ba uh, the basement bedrooms are gonna go. And if you guys remember, basically in line with this stairs or in line with that LVL right there, the first one on the stairs, the inside of that two by four wall is gonna be equal with that. So these stairs are gonna have to be pushed over a little bit and whatever gap is uh, remaining in there, we'll have to fill it in with some blocking. So again, drywall will go straight down that, straight across here and straight across to the other wall over there. And then that will separate the bedroom. So once I get the measurement basically from the LVL to the wall over there, we'll know where to stop on our gun room or bunker room here. And uh, it's somewhere around 19 feet or so. But uh, hopefully we've got enough of the particle board to do this entire wall over here, the inside wall over here, and then we'll figure out what we're actually gonna do on the ceiling. And then we might actually use my, sis my sister's tile to uh, do the floor actually. So we've got so much of that stuff that she gave us that uh, it's definitely not gonna be all used up in the laundry room. So we might have a very cool looking uh, room in here where everything fits nice and uh, quality, uh, good quality fit and finish. So uh, I'm gonna get set up, get this first board over here, clean up the floor over here, get it up off the ground, get the laser level on, and then we will go from there. All right, so first panel is good and set. And like I said, just because particle board isn't good to water, I got it off the ground pretty good. Actually used, uh, that's probably a 5 8 inch piece of lumber. So 5 8 of an inch off of the ground. Hopefully we do that all the way around. And then we just put some trim board up against here. You really won't be able to see that gap at all. Uh, as for this side over here where the lumber is going that actually sits on the ground, uh, that should probably still be no problem to go 5 eighths of an inch uh, up off the ground. And the good thing again, using particle board instead of drywall, the trim that we put on here, we don't have to hit any studs and we don't even have to hit the bottom plate. You can pretty much just brad nail right to this particle board and that should be strong enough that will actually hold on to uh, a brad nail that uh, we don't, again, have to worry about hitting anything important.
Okay, so real quick, while we're building this wall out, I actually feel really good about the layout because as you can see, the uh, two by fours are pretty much going right under almost every single floor joist. So for example, while over here, we started doing the cross bracing to tie all these joists in together. I really don't think that's gonna be needed over on this side. Uh, for example, like over here, this whole part of the stairs is completely done. All of the cross bracing is in. And if you go ahead and kind of take a measurement, the cross bracing is about five feet or so from the main beam in, and then it's about five feet or so from the outside wall in. Well, with by putting a wall up over here in the basement, there's really no need for cross bracing because four feet in now for, actually it's 20 some feet. Uh, I think it's 20 feet, eight inches exactly where this little sliver here went in. Um, we're four feet in, again, under every single floor joist here. So anything that we put on this side of the house should be extremely, extremely strong. And this goes pretty much all the way into the master bedroom. So as long as we don't do anything heavy in the master bedroom, we really only have to put those cross bracings in now for these joists going this way uh, in four or five feet, and then from this side of the beam in four or five feet. So. Basically, that just cuts down on a lot of me having to do those cross bracings because again, this entire part of the house is now being held up by walls, which is awesome, including over here. I probably won't put any cross bracing in the utility room because uh, yeah, we're about eight or so feet out coming this way, uh, but that wall right there is supporting the dining room really strongly. And now this uh, bunker room is gonna be supporting this side of the house very strongly. All right guys, so I just made a Home Depot run. Uh, obviously, as you can see, we ran out of the particle board. And I think even in this video a minute ago, I just said that this was only 20 feet or something. I, I still don't know where I'm getting my measurements from. But uh, when, I, when I ran to the store to pick up that particle board anyway, I thought I just counted the uh, Fox blocks uh, eight inches on center sections and then just multiplied it. And I was like, oh yeah, it's 18 or 19, we'll be fine. But uh, we're actually at like 24 feet, eight inches. I don't know why earlier I think I said 20 inches, but we're 24 feet long in here. So uh, we need at least one more piece here. And then a third piece can probably be cut down up there. And then this little sliver over up in here also. But I didn't pick that up at Home Depot because uh, the weather doesn't look too great out and I didn't want to take the chance of it getting rained on. And like I said before, this stuff does not last long. In fact, 
fact, that little tiny sliver up there, that last little uh, four foot piece, that piece was actually sitting outside last night and it still looks okay. But if you touch it with your hand, that little sliver up there is no longer smooth like this. The uh, humidity and when it rained last night, it didn't get rained on, but it already starts to raise little fuzzies off of there. And uh, yeah, didn't want to take the chance. So I'll pick up two more pieces later. But for right now, what I want to do is start getting some light in there so I can see what the hell I'm doing. And based on these lights in here, I went ahead and just got some more four inch pot lights. And those are six joist sections apart from each other. So within this 24 feet or so, we'll have four lights in here. We'll go ahead and put a light switch over probably on this stud right here. So however we do this secret door when we walk in, we'll probably have it swing open this way. And then there'll be a light switch right there. Now, the only thing I hope that doesn't bite me in the butt is because this isn't an occupied space. Hopefully the county isn't like all crazy and like, hey, you need, you know, a million light switches or a million outlets in here, you know, every 12 feet or something. Well, the county shouldn't even really know that th this is here. They will when they come out and do a framing inspection, but uh, they really shouldn't know. So. I really only want to have a two gang outlet over top of where the bench is going to go. So that way we have four outlets total to run whatever, like my tumbler for cleaning brass. Uh, and really, I don't know what else I'm going to put on the bench, but at least that'll give me four options. And like I said, probably up in that upper corner, I'll probably put a TV. So I'll throw a box up in there, wire that up. We'll have an outlet down here and then just four lights in there and we should be good. And I went ahead and picked up, you know, a bunch, a whole box more of uh, single gangs and some outlet covers. I got eight more. I bought every light that they had. So we can put like four more randomly in the basement throughout the gym area and stuff like that and start getting some light down there. And then we went ahead and got our fin set and this type of uncoupling membrane. Uh, Schluter, probably everyone's familiar with them. They're the orange company that makes this type of stuff and up the walls and completely waterproofs a bathroom. But Schluter is pretty expensive. This stuff too was still pretty expensive. These were almost $100 per mat or per roll and I need two just to go down into the basement into that room. So what the uh, uncoupling membrane does is yes, you can put tile directly onto concrete. It's just not a good idea. Uh, that concrete is still new. And in fact, we've got a few hairline cracks that had formed uh, basically where the pads are uh, over pretty much out every pad, I think got a little crack. So like right here, we got a little hairline crack in this corner that went over to that one. And then I think from this one here, we've got a crack that went that way. So the concrete's still new. Uh, it's gonna settle over time. So if you do put tile directly down onto concrete that cracks, the crack expands and moves, you're gonna break your tile and you're gonna break your grout line. So an uncoupling membrane gets basically uh, thin set it down to the concrete, just like tile would but then you thin set again on top of the membrane, then put your tile. That way that tile has, or that membrane has a little bit of movement like this and your tile isn't directly onto your concrete. And you can actually put that stuff directly down on top of this OSB also. So instead of having to use that like uh, spire, that cement board like down on top of this and then you tile on top of that, if uh, thickness is an issue, like if you're gonna hit a door or something, then you can put this down directly on top of uh, the wood and then the thin set, then the membrane, then the thin set, and then your tile again. Again, if you're working with uh, restrictions on thickness. So this does take the placement of that. And my dad thinks that that's probably why all those tiles broke at my sister's house. They nailed down the uh, board that I, the cement board that I'm talking about. And my dad thinks the nails we're moving with the subfloor and I don't think they use the probably the right type of thin set and which by the way this thin set here is only going to go under the uncoupling membrane it's not going to go on the underneath of the tile because this says it has a maximum of like 13 inch tile pieces on its longest side while uh, the they make another uh, type of that that's like 15 inches 
Come on, Sosa. Come on. Come say hi. Come on, you big baby. Come here. What are you doing? What are you doing? All right, I'll leave the door open. Anyway, uh, they do make a thin set for large piece tiles. So apparently this stuff can even crack and break. So uh, my sister's probably used the, the people who did her house, they probably used the wrong stuff anyway. So a uh, bunch of contributing factors that probably led that to breaking along with an uneven floor where they had an addition added on. So it was a whole bunch of stuff. So we don't want that to happen here. So uncoupling membrane on the concrete it can move and hopefully not break our grout lines. And then we got the little plastic things that go in between the tiles so it makes a nice even floor. And I think just some other miscellaneous stuff. So let's go ahead and wire up the lights right now so we can see what the hell we're doing. And then we'll start mixing some of this stuff up and uh, we'll go ahead and put down some of that. We'll let it dry for 24 hours and then we'll go ahead and we'll get our tile dig going. So uh, hang tight and we'll work on electricity first, right? Hey, okay, she'll help, we'll see. All right, so got the mortar mixed up here. It says five to six liters. Uh, I don't know if that includes the entire bag that you're supposed to put in, but we still got maybe a quarter of the bag left. But that's a pretty thick uh, paste-like, so I don't really want to do any more than that. Uh, but mixed it for five minutes, five to ten minutes set time, mix it again, and then we're going to put it on. So right now we're in a five-minute waiting period, and then we'll go ahead and mix it up one more time. And then I've got all these cut up. So we're gonna lay them uh, a cross way because uh, they're only 39 inches. So we couldn't have uh, gone this way. So we'll have to lay like basically four feet at a time, 39 inches deep. And then I uh, should have eight total to go this way. And then I did buy these little strips to basically kind of glue two pieces together and that creates a watertight seal. So uh, again, right now we're just in a five minute holding pattern and then we'll go ahead and lay them across and trowel them down and then we'll come back tomorrow or uh, the next day when these are fully set up and cured. And then I guess we can go ahead and lay tile.
All right, everybody, I am wrapping this up here in this video. So in the next video uh, for this project, you'll see me starting to lay tile, get the last uh, two boards that I need to buy here to fully do this. And then after tiling, we'll talk about how we're gonna trim this out. And uh, I don't know, I tried to make my screws as you guys saw as 100% as possible, but there's still some gaps. So I'm thinking maybe about doing kind of like a board and batten kind of, maybe like a chair rail or something halfway up or maybe a little bit lower, depending how bad or uh, how big we bring those uh, like screens down that I'm gonna use that will uh, attach the guns to uh, the gun rack. Uh, but we'll figure that all out later. And then we'll figure out what we're gonna put up on the ceiling, how we're gonna finish that out. And yeah, let's just let this dry, get cleaned up. I'm exhausted, it's late at night and uh, I am dying of thirst. I'm sweating like crazy. Uh, so I will catch you guys on the next one. So if you like this build, again, let me know what you guys think that we should call it, give it a nickname. You guys have any suggestions for what I should put in here? And uh, again, if you like it, hit that thumbs up, comment as always. Hit us up on Neck of the Woods 2020. Aaron got some pictures up actually the other day where we uh, finished painting that side of the house, it looks good and everything. Again, we did that on Instagram. So you guys get to see a little bit more firsthand uh, if you guys are up to date on that as opposed to waiting for videos to come out. So until then, we'll see you guys next time. Subscribe if you're not already and uh, hope you all take care.